And you set it up per the manual. Per the manual, down to the millimeter, yes. And we are flying high rate to get this thing off us. We are, and it flew just nice and smooth that way. Yes, it did. Ready? Yep, I can't wait anymore. sooner than that but I want to make sure it's up to speed first I'm using the AR 8000 and so we're gonna put this uh, get this up and running okay now pause the video and write this down that way um, when you go and get your your model out you can connect everything according and this is how it's going to work on the DX 8s on the aileron you want to connect in a Y connector and then you want to take your left aileron, the port side aileron, and you're going to click, connect that into um, that Y harness into the aileron. Now, you're going to have to plug one in at a time and find out which one is the left. It's important that that is the left one going into the aileron. And then you're going to take the thrust vectoring number two and you're going to connect it into the other side of that y, y harness. Then you're going to move to elevator. On elevator, you're going to take the remaining aileron, which will be right side, and that will go into the Y harness. And then vectoring number one will go in to the other part of the Y harness on elevator. When you get into rudder, you're going to need a Y connector. And you're going to connect the rudder into the Y connector. And then you're going to take thrust vector, or that vector number three, and you're going to plug it into the Y harness. After that, you've got the gear. After that, you're going to take the right canard on the right side of the plane and you're going to stick that into auxiliary one. Then you're going to take the canard on the left side and you're going to connect that into auxiliary two. And that's how you hook that up. Golly, that is one of the cleanest flying jets the rudder is super effective. I'm not using much of it at all. After a fresh setup in the radio, while you're still in the system setup, when you come to wing type, you want to make sure that you are on Elevon. You don't want Elevon B, otherwise it's going to throw the servos off. They're going to be reversed. And we're already going to have to reverse some servos, but this will really throw things off. So we want to make sure that you are on just normal Elevon and the tail is normal. Now we can go to the main screen. Once you get to the main screen, there are some servos that will have to be set up. Now remember, I am using an older receiver of the 8 channel. And anything new, it could be reversed because they make changes all the time. But you want to get to that right aileron, and we're going to have to reverse that. We're also going to have to go to the left aileron and reverse it too. Just make sure that they are in the right direction. I'm betting you will have to reverse those. Now we can go on down to the mix. Ignore the elevator flap. Just highlight that and then roll the dial till mix one comes up. Now we're going to have to bring the flap because that's our auxiliary one to the aileron. So what we'll do is we'll bring in aileron and this will be auxiliary one which in the receiver is going to be called flap. Now we'll change this rate to 30 percent 
And that's all we need according to the manual to get this deflection on the full rates. I'm setting up full rates on this because you're going to need that canard movement just to get it off the ground. Uh, low rate I found is just very sluggish. That's all we have to do on that. We'll go to mix two and we'll finish off the aileron. And this one's going to be auxiliary two. Now these numbers are going to be a little different here. I'm putting a 38 on the one side of the servo movement. And the other is going to be a 39. And this is because to get that full rate on the canard, according to the manual for the proper servo deflection, I have to do this. And that's because the servo arm isn't exactly center. The way the gearing is in the servo, it's actually way from the center just a little bit by one tooth. And so to get that nice uh, rate that the book calls for, I got a 38 and a 39 percent. On mix three, we're going to be working on the elevator. So uh, here's that elevator. And this flap is actually auxiliary one. This one's going to be at 50%. And again, this is just my plane. Your plane might be just a little bit different. Just measure those uh, movements on the canards. And well, on all the surfaces, actually. And this one's going to be the 48. And this is how I got a proper deflection. Going to mix four, and we're finishing out the elevator. Now we want auxiliary two. Now something different is going to happen here. This is going to go negative because that canard is going to have to move the opposite way when that elevator is deployed. And I have a 46 on this one and a 49 on this one. And there we are. Now we're almost done. We're going to go back down to system setup. That's where we want to go. And under switch select. Now we already have an inhibit right here on the flap. And that's because when you have a fresh startup, we didn't start up anything on the flap on the DX8. So that will automatically be inhibited. That is fine. But an auxiliary two, this has to be inhibited also. Otherwise, when you go to engage the auxiliary two switch, you're going to notice that your canard is going to move up and down. And it would have to be in a neutral position uh, for it to work properly. So if you eliminate the switches on that, then we are ready to go. If you find that it's too twitchy, no problem. Just go to the DR Expo. And as you can see on my Expos, I just went 35%, but I didn't do anything on the actual servo movement under the dual rate. And that's because you really got to get these surfaces to move, hunk around this big bird. It is very heavy. If you don't stay in the uh, full rate, you will have a rough time lifting this up off the ground. So with that, that's it for the DX8. Let's move on to the DX9. After you've made a fresh model memory in the DX9, when you come across the aircraft type, this is actually going to be that wing type. You want to make sure that this is also at Elevon and not Elevon B because those servos are actually going to be backwards just like the DX8. So you want to make sure that Elevon is normal and also the tail is normal too. After that we can go back to the main screen. Now we can go into the servo setup and we will have to reverse 
the right and left aileron. So here's the right, we'll reverse that one, we'll reverse the left. Now this works on my receiver. It might be different if you're using a newer receiver because those changes are always being made all the time. Just make sure that they are deflecting in the proper manner. Now we can go down to the mixing portion. We're going to scroll down here to mix one, highlight that, make sure that that is normal and we'll just click on the normal. We want to bring up aileron to auxiliary one, but this is going to be the flap in this case because if we roll it's auxiliary two, we want auxiliary one which is the flap. And on the rate for this particular radio and my plane, this is actually set at a 35, I'm sorry, a 30, and a 35 over here, and that's just to get that proper servo movement according to the manual. Now we can go to mix two. We still need aileron. And this one's going to be the auxiliary two. On this movement, I've got a 38. And a 39. Again, that's just because that servo arm doesn't line up dead center. It's off by one, two. Can you believe that? Now we go to mix number three. Click on that normal. This is going to be elevator. And this will be that flap or auxiliary one. And here to work on mine was the 50. This is a 48. And then on number four, we can finish up the elevator. And this will be auxiliary two. And this will have to be negative. to get that proper movement of the servo. And this is a 49er. Just as with the DX8, we have to eliminate those switches. We can do that by coming up to the system setup. And we're gonna scroll down To channel assignment. Uh, we can see we're in a different screen compared to the DX8 and we want to go down to the bottom and highlight that next button and here we are. This is where we turn them off. Under that auxiliary one it's not available and that's because we didn't set up a flap. But under the auxiliary two, if I can ever get there, we want to scroll that to inhibit. And of course, the roll knob doesn't matter because we have nothing hooked up to that channel three auxiliary. So make sure you do check your manual, make sure all the surfaces are deflecting the right way. You'll also want to make sure that the movements are uh, measured out and according to the manual. I like to stay in high rate. And if we bring this down to the dual expo, well, I just like to go up on all the surfaces to about 30, 35, maybe 40%. But that way we still have our movement on the surfaces and they're not as twitchy. So with that, I hope this helps. And this is Captain Mike at Motion RC. And we will see you out at the field. See ya.